need help with GED RLA comma rules, then you're in the right place. Hi, this is Parker from Dust Prep Champions, teaching you how to pass the GED fast. You can get started by clicking subscribe down below. So what GED comma rules do you have to know for the GED test? And why do I have these two candles here? Am I gonna juggle them in the video? You'll have to wait and see. Comma rule number one is to put a comma before a coordinate conjunction that links two independent clauses. So right now you might be wondering, but what is a coordinate conjunction? Coordinate conjunctions connect or coordinate words, phrases, and clauses. Now you might be wondering what a clause is, so let me tell you. A clause is a group of words with both the subject and a verb. Now you might want to go a little bit deeper and you might be asking yourself now, what is a subject? Well, the subject is just what the sentence is about, or it could be who's performing an action in a sentence. So another important word to know here is a verb. So what's a verb? Well, a verb, to put it simply, describes an action. So for now, know that a verb describes an action. If you want to learn more about verbs, check out my other video on GD Grammar down below. And one more thing that you should know before we keep going here is what is a predicate? So the predicate tells you what the subject does in the sentence. So now when we get back to the question, what's a coordinate conjunction? Remember, coordinate conjunctions connect or coordinate words, phrases, and clauses. And there are seven that you really should know. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Now you might be wondering, with all the stuff that you have to memorize already for the GED test, how are you gonna rem remember these seven coordinating conjunctions? Well, you can just remember one word, fanboys. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. Now, if that still seems like a lot to remember, then I just recommend you memorize these three here. So these are kind of your big three coordinate conjunctions that will come up a lot. And, but, and, or. Now, ideally though, you will learn all seven or at least be familiar with them or at least know enough to recognize that these are coordinate conjunctions. So back to comma rule number one again. Comma rule number one is to put a comma between a coordinate conjunction that links two independent clauses. So an independent clause has both the subject and a predicate and can stand as a sentence. Whereas a dependent clause has both the subject and a predicate, but can't stand as a sentence. So let's see, is this an independent or a dependent clause? You can pause the video and try to figure this out and we'll go over it. When I woke up this morning. All right, ready to go over this? When I woke up this morning is a dependent clause. So remember, a dependent clause has both the subject and a predicate, but it can't stand as a sentence. Whereas an independent clause has a subject and a predicate, but it can stand as a sentence. So another way to look at this is that a dependent clause has a complete, has an incomplete thought, whereas an independent clause has a complete thought. You put a comma between a coordinate conjunction that links two independent clauses. Now, hopefully you've really got comma rule number one. So where to put the comma. Here's another example problem for you. So in the sentence, I love to go for walks in the woods, but I read books when it's raining outside. A comma needs to be added to the sentence, but where should it go? Pause the video and try to figure this out. All right, let's go over this. So we need a comma right here before the word but. All right, so it should read, I love to go for walks in the woods, comma, but. And again, rule number one is to put a comma before a coordinate conjunction that links two independent clauses. And remember, but is a coordinate conjunction. We've got two independent clauses here. I love to go for walks in the woods is one, and I read books when it's raining outside is another independent clause. And so therefore we need to put a comma before the coordinate conjunction that links these two independent clauses. Congratulations for making it this far into the video. You know, GED studying can sometimes be boring, so to liven it up and to reward you for making it this far into the video, I'm gonna show you a video of me juggling those candles. Ready? Those candles weren't actually lit in that shot there, but maybe, just maybe, I might actually juggle them with a live flame later in the video. Hint, hint. So comma rule number two is to put a comma after a dependent clause when it starts the sentence. So comma rule number two, let's jump right into an example here. When I walked in the woods, I saw a fox. Where does the comma need to go? Hopefully you see here that the comma needs to go between woods and I. By the way, champion shout out to BMW for requesting the topic. So comma rule number three is to use a comma to separate quotes. So let's look at an example here right off the bat. Quote, I told you you could pass the GED, quote, said Parker. Where does the comma go in this example? Hopefully you see here that the comma needs to go after the word GED. So the comma should be GED comma said Parker. And I'll notice that the comma goes right before the second quotation mark. All those fireworks from a minute ago remind me of one of my favorite Drake songs. Speaking of Drake, I should have clarified this earlier. When I'm talking about commas here, I'm not talking about commas like in the future song. I'm talking about commas for grammar. So if you know what future song I'm talking about, let me know down below. Comma rule number four is to use a comma to separate a date from a year. So let's launch into an example. On January 1st, 2019, we celebrate New Year's Day. 
this is missing a comma. According to comma rule number four, where should the comma go? So the comma should go in between 01 and 2019. So it should say on January 01 comma 2019 and then the rest of the sentence. So that's comma rule number four. So let me just be honest here. I was gonna juggle candles with a live flame, but there is a smoke detector right above where I'm filming here. So I don't know if that's a good idea, but you already know I'm gonna do it anyway. So just keep watching. Comma rule number five is to use a comma to separate three or more list items. So here's an example. My shopping list includes butter, eggs, milk, and cereal. So there's several commas missing here. Where should they go? Hopefully you see here that we would want a comma after butter, eggs, and milk. Rule number six is to use commas to separate extra or unnecessary info from the rest of the sentence. So again, let's go right into an example. I brought my cat Tommy to the vet. There should be two commas here that we're missing. Where should they go? Hopefully you see here that the comma should go after cat and after Tommy. Don't believe me that I'm really gonna juggle live flames in this video? Well, don't believe me, just watch. And I do like that Bruno Mars song, but I also like All Gold Everything by Trinidad James. So whether or not that was worth the hype or not, to watch me juggle those candles, at least you're going away with six practical comma lessons you can use to boost your score on GED RLA. And if you really want to boost your score on GED RLA, then go over to this next video here and watch my GED practice test. I do a video practice test where I go through a whole practice test on GED RLA. You won't want to miss it. This is Parker from Test Prep Champions, helping you pass the GED fast. Thank you so much for watching.